check, 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 check. Check, check, check. Check, check, check. Right. Good evening. How are we doing? Everybody doing good? You know what? Let, there we go. Let's give the Lord a clap offering. We good with that? <laughs> Praise the Lord. It is so great to be back to have people in the house of the Lord and online. So um, it's going to take us a little bit to get used to that. So I'm going to repeat some things and try to repeat some things and uh, keep everything going. Um, as always, before we start our service, uh, I'd like to go ahead and take uh, any prayer requests we might have. Anybody, what can we help you pray about? I've got a couple that I'm going to throw out there, so don't be shy. Step right up. All right, I'll go first then. Let's remember James. James has been admitted to the hospital. I just posted something a little bit ago. He's got some kidney issues, kidney stones. Not kidney issues, kidney stones. Um, but uh, he's in a lot of pain, not doing too great there. So if we can remember him. And then um, also don't forget Gary Hepner. He's still in the hospital. We want to not forget him. Um, don't know when he's coming home. Uh, found out he might be coming home tomorrow, might be coming home Friday or possibly Saturday. So we just don't know. So let's remember Gary. Um, all right, what else? Don't be shy. Y'all are quiet. There we go. Yes, sir. <laughs> Amen. God answers all prayers, right? <laughs> That's awesome. Good to see you, Mr. and Ms. Hooten. God bless you guys. All right. Anything else? Yes, ma'am. Praise God. They 
Praise the Lord. All right. Daryl, um, I'm going to repeat everything to those, uh, our family online. Uh, Daryl has been fighting cancer for quite a while, and um, two years, and been going through a lot. And he just got some PET scan results back. Everything's good. He switched to Barnes Hospital. So we're going to continue to pray and lift him up. And um, we're just in faith going to thank God for the good things. All right. What else? Not a bad crowd for Wednesday night. I'll take it. Yes, Miss Carrie. Yes. Amen. Absolutely. That's right. We're going to continue to pray that that, yes, that Carrie's request is that that curve is flattened and that uh, we don't have to worry about that. And, and I, in agreement, I'm going to agree with that and just ask God to be with it. Yes, sir. Amen. He'll find out more on Friday for his cancer uh, results, and, and we're just gonna we're just gonna thank God for the good things, and in faith, just agree that uh, that there's not gonna be anything there. So, anything else? Y'all are quiet tonight. You're like, you know, you're just gonna repeat it back. Oh, there. You- amen. Amen. We'll be praying for them. Amen. We'll be praying for your grandson that they'll find an apartment. Absolutely. We sure will. God is good, and he can do all things. All right. Anything else? Don? Hold on just a sec, Chris. Don? Amen. We'll be, we'll be asking God to help you make that decision. Amen. Miss Cody? Amen. We will. We sure will, Miss Cody. We'll we'll be praying for your coworker that lost her husband. What's what's their last name? Steel. Okay. I'll just put Steel family down. All right. I got to talking and forgot to write this stuff down. Y'all are gonna get mad at me. All right, Christy. You said you had some. Well, yeah. We have several unspoken requests. Okay. Amen. Anything else? Anything else? We good? All right. Anyone else here in person? It's so good to see everybody on a Wednesday night. Seen some of you all tonight for the first time in like eight weeks. So blessed to uh, to be back with everybody, and uh, just uh, it, it's just amazing to to see everybody. It's crazy how much we miss each other, right? We get we take each other for granted when we see each other week after week after week, and then we miss each each other and. Uh, Absence makes the heart grow fonder, right? And isn't that what they say? I agree. All right. If there's nothing else, we'll go to the Lord in prayer. All right. Heavenly Father, we just come together and we just thank you so much for everything. We thank you, God, that we can assemble together again and and help us to never take this for granted, Lord, as we've done in the past. And I'm talking about myself here and, and just help us to just always appreciate each other and always look out for each other. God, you've heard each and every request tonight as they've been made known, and and we just give them to you. We lay them at your feet. In faith, God, we trust you for the answers, and and, and we come together in agreement that uh, you're just going to take care of everything. Father, we serve an amazing God, and we're just so thankful to have you as our heavenly Father. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who paved the way to our eternal life. Lord, we just love you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so we'll get those posted. Um, tonight, we're doing a testimony service. Now, testimony services uh, go one or two ways. They're either really short, and we're out of here quick, or we can go long and really lift each other up, and that's really what I'm looking for tonight. Um, you know, the definition of a testimony service is just what God has done for you. Now, w- when I first approached this, I reflected on, our, on myself. I reflected on this church. And God has done so many amazing things. And I think if we really look at it, we all should be able to find something in our life where God has blessed us. 
especially during these last six or eight weeks. We've all had some lesson that we've learned. We've all come out with something. God has provided supernaturally in one way or another. God has been there for us. And we and again, I'm not putting anybody on the spot because here's the deal. Because we're going online, and if you want to share your testimony, we're going to have you come up, or I'm going to give you a mic if you don't want to come up in front of the camera. I'll hand you a mic, but we want to hear about it. That's the point of it. The point is this. I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to say preachery things, right? I'm supposed to talk like this. I'm supposed to say all these things. That's just my job. When people hear each other and how God has done amazing things in your life, and you're not the preacher, right? People's like, whoa, maybe, maybe, maybe Buddy's not lying, <laughs> right? And, and so that's what I'm looking for tonight is that how we can give God glory in one way or another. Now, nothing is scripted. I've talked to uh, uh, John is going to come up first. He's my first guy, and uh, it, it's, his testimony is going to blow you away. And, and I appreciate his honesty. I appreciate, I believe you will too, and, and I believe you'll be, uh, you'll be uh, blown away at God's goodness and, and just exactly what he does for us. Um, I, but, but before we do, though, before I have you come up, John, I want to talk about for just a minute why we're supposed to give testimonies. If you think about the Gospels in general, what are the Gospels? Well, they're, they're letters, right? But they're testimonies to how amazing Jesus is, especially take the Gospels. But just about every book in the Bible, I think you could say every book in the Bible, is a testimony to how great God is. God did not give us this gift. God does not bless us for us to just take these gifts and to tuck them away and never tell anybody about them. We are to tell others just how great God is. You're familiar with Mark chapter 5, and you don't have to turn there. You're, you're very familiar with the story. You know, Jesus pulls up with his disciples. This guy comes out that's possessed by demons. Jesus heals him. What does Jesus ask him to do? He, he's been healed. He's ready to follow Jesus, right? He, he's ready to, to walk that road right behind him. And I believe we would too if, if God delivered us in a major way in person or especially if we seen Jesus, how amazing that would be. But Jesus says something very, very exciting, should be exciting to us. In Matthew, or excuse me, Mark chapter 5 and verse 19. But Jesus said, no, go home to your family and tell everything the Lord has done for you and how merciful he has been. You see, Jesus specifically said, no, go tell your family so that they'll know why we should serve the Lord. Why should we, why, why should we come? Why should we come to the Lord? You ever think about that? We, we, we oftentimes, when, when a new believer wants to uh, learn more about God, where do you point him to? And I'm not pimping my own sermons out. Forgive the, uh, the, the eulogy there. But, I mean, you know, we should know the attributes of God, right? Just how awesome God is, that he's omnipresent. He's there with us no matter where we're at. He's om omnipotent. Omniscient. He knows everything that we're supposed to go. And he's omnipotent. He is so powerful. Let's talk about God. Now, I'm going to blame, blame Dave for this, because Dave and I talked this morning. We was lucky enough to meet up for breakfast. We ought to be able, when someone wants to know about the Lord, be able to, first off, give a testimony. Why does someone want what I have, right? Honest. You ever, you ever look at someone, right? You ever met someone that's such a good salesman, they, they, they tell you something and you automatically want to go out and get the same thing? Why don't we do that as Christians? Why don't we do that as Christ followers? We ought to be able to, at a moment's notice, when someone wants to talk about the Lord, be able to say, man, this is what God did for me. Let me, let me share that with you. Don't say, hold on, let me call Buddy up and, and, and I'll, I'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll have him point you in the right direction, Right? That's, that's every single one of us' responsibilities. Dave and I talked about that, and I, man, it just was on my heart all day. And I think it's true. Here's your opportunity to step out in faith. Are you ready? Here's your opportunity to step out in faith tonight. And I just pray you're encouraged. Again, if you don't want to step in front of the camera, um, stay where you're at. I'll give you a mic. Can't say nothing wrong about God, right? He's good. He does so many good things for us. Mr. Lytle, will you come up, and will you give us your testimony first? All right. Let's give John a big hand. And you're mic'd up and ready to go. You just kind of talk. It'll pick you up wherever you're at.
and know what I'm doing. And I have people that really love me. And God means so much to me. And I had to put some place, people in their places, like my ex-wife. I had to tell her just to leave me alone. And I had just to, she's a devil. And, and she's always trying to cut me down. And I didn't need that in my life anymore. She cut me down for 30 years. And she cuts my, down my 30, 40 year old daughter. My daughter has blocked her mother off from the phone and she won't talk to her. She's, she's evil, but she doesn't understand that. And she's, my daughter doesn't go to church now. Please pray for her. She's got a beautiful voice. And she used to use it for God. And she's not using it anymore. Her favorite song that when she was a senior in Christian school was Christmas Shoes. Her senior year when she sang that at the Christmas play, at the choir did, she sang that. She had everybody in that audience in tears. I remember that. And I just... And my daughter and I now are back together. But I'm so, because my ex-wife kept her away from me. And I am proud to be a Christian again and coming to church. And thanks to Vicki, who is uh, always there. If I got something that I need to talk to, I can pick the phone up and call her or Shirley. They're always there for me. Or I could talk to Craig and Lara. You know, I've got such a support team. And I'm never lonely. I was always lonely before. I used to be with who I was with. If I was gone to talk to a neighbor for a while, I couldn't even talk to a neighbor. Where you been? What are you doing? I don't have to do that anymore. I get on the phone, I talk to Shirley. We talk every day or every other day. My neighbor downstairs, Mary, I talk to her. We talk, and we talk to her. I talk to Shirley and, and Vicki and, and my neighbor Lucinda downstairs. And you know, I just, I can talk to people. I don't have to worry about somebody dictating my life because I know what God wants me to do. He wants me to be the witness to other people. And I'm not ashamed of it anymore. I ran for too many years of being not myself and running from God. And I'll never run away from God ever again. And this church has been a blessing to me. And I know when I had my surgery on May the 1st, this church was behind me. And I think that for Vicki, for her, the day she took me up there for surgery. And my niece surprised me. She decided to come down. And Vicki and my niece have got this. She caught, uh, texted Vicki and wished her Happy Mother's Day. My nieces became a friend of Vicki's too. My niece is just one of a kind. Because after the first of the, uh, the month, I'm going to go up and see him. I haven't seen her since March the 16th. I, I really want to go. But Illinois is still locked down. But my brother was, my brother, when we were growing up as kids, didn't like to go to church. He was not a church person. And now, he's a believer. And he knows that Bible hindsight and backwards. I'm so proud of him. And we were so, when we were growing up, he was the athlete, I was the bench warmer. You know, and we were so direct opposite. But now, we are just, we're so connected. And I love my brother. Out of five kids, all the girls are gone, but just my brother and I are here. But he is, 
He's my hero. And his daughter is, she's one of a kind. She's always there to help my brother. She's always telling me how to cook something, or I've, I got a question like, ask Vicki how to do something, or, you know, I'm not struggling. I can. But one thing she did tonight, she told me to go to Walmart and buy their sweet cornbread, and that was terrible. <laughs> that was the most terrible cornbread I ever ate in my life. I ate two slices of it and threw it in the trash. It was too sweet. But, you know, it tastes like I was eating, I don't know, so it tasted like cake, not cornbread. And I was going, ugh. Because I, I, I made a big pot of large lima beans with ham and onions and all that, and I said, mm. I said, I've done better buying the jalapenos. <laughs> but I want to thank you all for letting me join this wonderful church and be part of this body. And one thing I believe in since I did, I never believed before, I tried to tell my ex-wife this, tithing makes a difference. And every time I get paid, I tithe. And I believe in tithing 100%. And it changes your life. Oh, that's, I believe in it. And God makes sure, I, I'm, I've got more money in the bank now than I've ever had because of tithing. And thank you all for letting me be a member of this church. He was not paid to say that about tithing, okay? <laughs> Let's just set that right now. No. You know, I, I, you know, to what John was saying, God wants us to love everybody, right? We're told to love everybody, and sometimes that's hard to love everybody. Sometimes we do have to remove toxic people from our relationships, and that's hard. That's, it's hard, but sometimes we've got to do that in order for us to, to move forward. John, we're going to be praying for you, and you know, one thing you said is, um, you know, you don't have to thank us for joining this church. We're, we're all just family, and uh, we're blessed to have each and every one of you, and, um, and just very blessed for that. Speaking about tithing, and, and, and this is where I want to chime in, is we had an opportunity to take out a $10,000 loan that was forgivable, um, and during one of my meetings uh, with other pastors, that was the thing. We're going to take out this loan. They're going to take out this loan. Hey, it's free money. It's $10,000. Buddy, are you going to do it? I said, nope, we're not. What do you mean? That's free $10,000. Nope, God's going to provide for our church, and we don't need a bailout, if you will. And you know what? Through you all and through tithing and God's provision to do abundantly above all than we think or imagine, the tithes have never been stronger. I mean, that is God. You know, what, what, is that, what, what does the Bible say? You know, you, you ask God for something, and what does he do? He shows up if you trust in him and you have faith in him. And that's exactly what we've done, and I'm so proud of this church, and I'm so proud of how we've been able to go through this virus when a lot of churches were scared how they were going to pay the bills. And I'm going to be honest with you, when, when we first made the decision to shut the doors, that was an absolute thought. Because let's be honest, most times, now it don't apply to this church, okay? I'm just going to say that right now. But most little churches, if they're not there and you've got your tithe, what happens? You go to Walmart, you know, you go out to eat or something. I mean, all these things can happen. I'm not saying they do every time, but it's easy for it to happen. That did not take place in this church. And I just want to say thank you to each and every one of you for doing all that you did. That's my testimony as a pastor. It's just how... Um, God came through how he provided through you all. You know, it's, it, it's, it's you had to be willing. There's two parts to God doing his will, right? You, someone's got to be willing. God wants to do all kinds of things through people. But they've got to be willing to do what God has laid on their heart in order to do. And sometimes that's not easy to, to do. Many of you didn't have jobs, were laid off for, for many, many weeks, maybe still not have a job. Thank you for, in faith, stepping out. We had people that don't even come to this church call me up and ask me to double check the address because they wanted to send their tithe. Only God can do something like that. I mean, I think we all would agree that that is just the providence of God. That is his amazingness coming through. You know, personally, I, I think when I look back the last six or eight weeks, and I said it to begin with, I appreciate each and every one of you so 
not so much more, but I don't want to take you all for granted, if that makes sense. You know, it's, it's an amazing thing to be able to look out and see you all looking back at me, you know? I was going crazier for a while, laughing at my own jokes, still did. I even did on Sunday, okay? But it's just, it's a blessing to have each and every one of you and to be able to interact. And, and that's what I took out of this last six or eight weeks as a pastor, two, those two things. God always provides, and it's so wonderful to have an actual congregation. And I thank you for allowing me to continue to be your pastor. I thank you so much. Um, that's all I've got for now. Who else wants to just give a testimony for the Lord? Don't be shy. Again, if you want to say something, I'll bring the mic to you. All right? I'll sit up here and make faces. Are you going to give a testimony? You want to come up or you going to bring the mic to you? All right, I can do that. Hi, I'm Sharon Garcia. Can't hear us. Okay. Oh, there we go. Now I can hear my, I can hear myself now. Uh, I'm not a great speaker, but my husband and I, we had lived in California, and we sold our property out in the middle of the desert. We made a little bit of profit. We moved to Kansas near my mom, and uh, so we searched around, and we found us a cheap house. My husband found the cheapest house in town cost us $9,000, paid cash, <laughs> but we had to fix it all up. The plumbing was bad, the, the gas lines were bad, the wallpaper was bad, the walls had cracks, the carpet was terrible, just everything. So it cost us quite a bit of money to fix this house up, and we lived there for 15 years, though. And when we lived in California, out in the desert there, we waited four months for electricity out in the middle of nowhere. And when they did put it in, they sent me a bill for $10,000. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we were just barely making it, $10,000. Well, we sold the property and everything, and we moved back here. And... They sent me a bill still. <laughs> Couldn't get lose them. Anyway, I put them off and put them off because they kept saying if somebody moved into the neighborhood that it would drop down. Well, it never did. It never did. Finally, I told my husband, I says, husband, we got to pay this bill. So one day I sat down and wrote the check out for $10,000. It's the only check I've ever written that big. <laughs> I took it down to the post office personally to make sure it got in the mailbox. I went home, and the mailman had come. And I got my mail out of the box. And what's in there? A letter saying, we didn't owe the $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> so I rushed back to the, the post office and said, can I please have my letter back that I put in while I <laughs> And they dug it out for me. They were really nice. This small town, they were really nice. They gave me my check back. So every time my husband would get upset about not having money and this and that, I said, look, we've got all kinds of stuff in this house. We've got more than our neighbors have. So what do we need more money for? And... His, his only thing was he liked to go gamble. <laughs> we are doing good. See, we are doing this thanks to Christy. And uh, so if you're afraid, I mean, here, I can't wipe it off any better than that. Okay. Anybody else? You all are like, I am not touching that thing. You all are crazy. Anybody else? All right, come on up. Well, that way you don't have to touch it. How's that? All right, Sydney is brave and coming on. Huh? You know what a popcorn testimony is? What's that? Stand up, turn white, and sit down. <laughs> <laughs> I never heard of that. <laughs> well, I am a popcorn testimony for sure because I have not gotten any sun with this quarantine. <laughs> um, so. I wanted to say thank you for the church deciding that um, 
they wanted to buy jewelry for Mother's Day because I thought that my business was going to go under and like it, I am a small business. It's just me. And so I work from home, which is a good thing. But at the same time, like when all this started happening, I couldn't go out and get supplies and I was freaking out a little bit. I'm thinking, okay, I am not getting a check from this boutique. I'm not getting a check here. Like, I don't know how I'm going to make things happen next month. But uh, church, I guess, stepped up and surprised me <laughs> one Wednesday night and was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and was like, we're going to buy jewelry from you. And so that was that was God because you – it. This month, I am exceeding my sales for what I projected. So, yeah, that's awesome. And I uh, also wanted to say that if you have a mental health, this quarantine thing, I'm an introvert. I like to stay indoors. <laughs> like, I like people, but only so much. And then I need <laughs> my me time. But... Um, it's weird because you want that social interaction, but you can't have it. And that was the thing I missed the most about being in quarantine was coming here. Because when Drew and I moved here, we didn't have any family close. And when we started coming here, this was our family. And so not being able to see you guys, not be able to see your faces, it was just, it hurt me. Like, I didn't like it. Um, but I also feel like, Quarantine has, God's blessed us with more family time. And yes, we get on each other's nerves because it's almost too much family time. But at the same time, like, I love Zoe being at home and not being at school. I know that sounds weird, but I wanted to be a homeschooling parent. And just knowing that she's home, like, gives me comfort. And I feel like our family has... Um, grown closer through all this and I suffer through uh, depression a mild depression here and there but sometimes it does get severe and I feel like during this quarantine I did have a little bit of mild depression but it was weird because I was stressed out but it was to the point where I was like not stressed out, and this fog kind of lifted from my brain. And I started remembering things that have been so stuck inside my brain, like packed in there years ago from my childhood. I'm just like, where did that come from? Why am I remembering this all of a sudden? It's like I've been so stressed out this last decade. I don't know why, but that I just couldn't remember anything. And I know that you guys are probably like, oh, you're just, it's just memory lapse or something, but no, I, I feel like this fog has been lifted from my head and I can think more clearly and I don't know, it's, it's just been good. So I don't know, I feel like that's, what's God, that's what God has done for me, my business, my family, and um, my mental health. I mean, I think if we look at both John and Sid's testimony, you know, we're a little family, right? We're a little family, and um, we miss each other. We, you know, we do our best to love on each other, and, um, you know, it's, uh, it, it's important. I want to touch on what John said earlier about Vicki. I mean, we've got people in this church. If you need something, let us know. If we will make it happen, and, and so many times, and, and I just want to, uh, you know, personally, uh, I mean, Vicki has vested her personal time and interest into John, and they've got a relationship like no tomorrow, as I do with, with, with all of you, but not all the time do we interact, you know, like, like we do. And so that's the amazing thing is that, you know, don't be afraid to, one, ask for help if you need it, for two, don't be afraid to, to, to strike up a conversation, you know, there's, there's lots of people, we're growing, God's adding to the church, and, and it's just a, it's a blessing. It, it really is. It, it's amazing. We had a full house first service, second service. We could have used a couple more, but uh, but still, we did really good on Sunday for uh, second service back. So God's just amazing. All right, I'll I won't shut up. Anybody else? Now remember, if you come up here, you don't have to touch nothing. It's completely fine. Carrie, you want to come up? 
I'll, I'll wipe it down for you on the way up. I'm going to touch it. Okay, here we go. Christy, mute it. See, I told you to mute it. I tell you. Just a quick testimony about um, the blessings that we receive. Our business, we have a, a business, as everybody knows, but it's a very um, luxury item, is what I like to say, that people don't n normally um, can afford to do what we do. Um, and so in the beginning, when this all came down, a lot of audio shops in Springfield had to close their doors. And for us in Stone County, we were deemed essential. And um, so that meant we could keep our doors open. And then the fact of, well, are people going to be afraid to spend money? Will they, you know, we would be last on their list of what they wanted to spend. And, um, but it turns out that get out, they knew that they would get out on their boats and be on the lake. And so we've been blessed that we've had almost a record month for April and, um, you know, that God has just continued to bless us that we can keep our doors open and keep paying the bills. So it's just, and we missed our. Round two. All right. Miss, Miss Garcia. Well, when we first had the lockdown, I was going to senior center, and I was riding the buses to the grocery store. Well, that all closed down, and I, was, and I don't have a car, and all of a sudden it was like, what am I going to do to go to the grocery store to buy groceries and stuff? And my brother, my brother, my son lives over in Springfield, but he was on lockdown over there with his kids. And who came along but Rayla and Buddy. And I want to thank both of them. They have been so nice to help me out and take me to the store and pick me up and bring me to church. So that's all I got to say is I'm glad I'm here. I'm going to owe so many people. Randy, you up? Oh. I uh, heard a preacher say the other day, he said, this is something I didn't think I'd, you'd ever hear me say. But he said, I prayed this morning that things would not change. He said, the things I'm talking about is, he said, I've seen that people do things from the church and people helping people and doing uh, things for each other and the church and everything. God, don't let that change. Amen. That's exactly right. All right, I got a new wipe. That was a new wipe, you see me. <laughs> I'm doing my best. Christy's helping. I know, I just listened to her. I'm, I'm not a public speaker, but the last three months, there's been an awful lot of people stepped into eternity. Let me talk about eternity for a few minutes. I landed in this world in 1933, the spring of my life, summer and autumn have came and gone. I've entered into the winter of my life. I have one sister that was 91 that passed, uncle 93, one aunt 101. So in the natural, today I have possibly 13, 14, 15 more years, more or less years left before I step into eternity. Let me <clears throat> give you one example of, of how long eternity may be. The scripture gives us one inside, it says that time shall be no more. And it's hard to to comprehend what that means, much less what eternity is. So let me give you one model of 
or an example of possibly how long eternity is going to be. Take a little sparrow bird that never dies, a silk scarf that never wears out. Mount Whitney is 15,000 foot of solid granite. A little bird drags that scarf across the top of Mount Whitney, Whitney one time every 10,000 years. When Mount Whitney is worn smooth with the sands of time, the first second of eternity hasn't begun. That's awesome. That is awesome. Thank you, Mr. Hooten. You know, that is that is exactly right. And that's the great thing about the Lord. I, I mean, again, I'm a preacher. I'm supposed to say preachery things. But I, I mean, that ought to be a testimony for every single one of us. We are free from hell and damnation. And every single one of us ought to have that mindset that, you know, why, why should we tell others? Because, man, look what God's done for us, you know? Thank you, Mr. Hooten. I appreciate that. That is amen. That is right. Anyone else? I've got new wipes in the back. All right, Drew, hold on. Are you going to come up front? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Y'all got to get tired of me walking around and seeing me running around here or there. Thank you. I appreciate it. I'm going to go get more wipes. All right, as most of you know me, you know, I have CF. And when all this stuff went around, a lot of people with CF are pretty concerned because that deals with our lungs. Well, fortunate for me, I hadn't been having to work, so I was able to stay home for all this. Whereas some people, if they had an essential job, you know, they were still having to get out and about and everything, including my brother. He still had to go to work, but they were taking precautions there, and he has CF as well. Um, but I've given a testimony a while back, and I could talk all day if I wanted to, to tell you everything that God's done for me. Um, but since my health really went down a couple years ago, one of the things that God has really showed me is how to just let everything go. Before, I'd always worry and um, want to hold on to that charge and make sure things were getting done the way I wanted them to be done. And so many things has happened in the last two years that, you know, would have put some people into some pretty anxiety on unsure of what's going to happen. But in the end, everything's always worked out for us. Um, last year, I was, you know, my lungs were at 28%, and I started seeing a transplant center, and I got turned down by two of them. But we knew something was going to happen. There was medicines that were coming about, and we knew that <clears throat> they were having good trials with them, and so we were just hoping and praying that that's what was going to be for me, and it was. <laughs> uh, last October, I was in the hospital for another lung collapse, and I was able to get on early access for this drug, and since then, my lung function's gone up to 38%, and I went from 128 pounds <clears throat> to 170 now. And blessed with this nice little belly. <laughs> I know a lot of people don't want bellies, but I've never been able to have one because with CF, that's part of it too. You can't digest your food as good, so you don't hold on to as much weight. So the more weight I have, the healthier I am essentially. And just as long as it don't keep getting bigger. <laughs> but, you know... Anytime something happens in life, just give it to God, and he's never disappointed me so far. So. I tell you, that is, that is awesome. That is, and that's so true. But how hard is that, really? Let's just be real. How hard is it to give God stuff, right? But, but, but yet, the more you do it, it's kind of like a muscle. The more you do it, the easier it becomes, Right? But it's just that, that those first few times that, boy, we've just got to do it. And, and, but when you do it, man, it just gets easier and easier. I had a lady tell me here a while back, I don't understand how you can just give thanks to God. She goes, I worry about everything. I said, well, it's taken me a long time. But you know what? I, I, I still have concerns. Don't get me wrong. But I give it to God, and, and I just let him deal with it. I can't do nothing about it. Amen? Nothing I can do. Huh?
Amen. That's right, John. Amen. Whenever we tell someone to have a blessed day, it does. You absolutely do. You see that difference. You absolutely do. Does anybody else want to share? Sid? Hey, there you go. Amen. 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 Basically what Sydney just said, I'm going to I'm going to talk to all you out there in virtual land is that this drug has just been a miracle drug for so many people. How it just helps uh people to get healthier and the ladies end up pregnant, okay? So because they're getting healthier. Now, that's not a side effect, I promise, all right? There's a couple things that go along with that, okay? But uh for the most part <laughs> Sydney says you need to to abort that. No. You know that's amazing and and what a great thing. Drew, you want to come back up and say something? Amen. Amen. We will definitely add that to the prayer list because like Drew was saying, there's so many countries out there that have not approved that for use. And they're seeing people in America be able to do that. And just, I mean, you know, they need some of that too. And, and that's a great point. That's something, something we really take for granted is just how blessed we are here in America, right? We didn't like our, our, our civil liberties being taken away from us, right? Although you could still go to Lowe's and Menards and be just fine. <laughs> so go figure. I, I'm just saying. <laughs> but um, no, you know, it, it just, God is just so good. He is just so good. And we just can't say enough about him. Anybody else? You want to come up or you me take them? God bless you. Thank you. You're okay. You're okay. You take your time, Miss Vicky. You just take your time. Take your time. Oh, I can kill some dead air. You you want to hear a bad dad joke? I'm oh, just kidding. <laughs> I got a ton of those. Let me tell you. <laughs> oh no, Miss Vicky's had some um, some back issues. Bless her heart, and she is just an amazing lady. She's making her way up as we speak, and um, you are just fine. You are just fine. You make yourself at home, young lady. Okay. You okay? Yep. All right. I'm going to get out of the way. Okay. First of all, I want to tell you something that happened with all this COVID and the kids having to stay home from school and everything. Um, most of you know my granddaughter, Dakota. She has ADHD and a lot of those things that go with it. Um, she was failing school. She... Um, up until they sent the kids home to learn from home, you know, be homeschooled pretty much, she was going to have to redo fourth grade. Well, now she is going into fifth grade because the one-on-one -on -one and everything that she had helped her. Yeah. So that is an answer to prayer, you know. Um, sometimes I think it would be better if she was homeschooled because that way she has that one-on-one. -on -one. The other thing is, um, I don't remember how long ago it was, we were having a discipleship class, and um, I took it, and you know, you, you try and remember all this stuff and everything, and you lean on God, and you, you tell, ask God, you say, God, um, use me, and you don't know how he's going to use you, but then... My job, I was seeing patients on a, you know, coming into our office and we would help them with financial assistance or 
um, help them with uh, their accounts and all. And I tried to explain to my coworkers and all, and they understood that we don't know what they've gone through. They didn't know what we went through either. So we wanted to treat them with compassion and all. Well, there was this one man that came in, John, and he was he had had lost his spouse, and he was brokenhearted. Well, a year before that, I lost mine. So there was a big connection there. You feel empty. You feel lonely and all. And he needed, he knew God, but he needed guidance and some TLC to know that it's okay to hurt. And it's okay, we're going to move on. And so I felt like that was what God wanted me to do, was to help him move on. And so that's why I did what I did for John and why I still do. And we're good friends. We would, I would take my computer over when we were having the virtual um, uh, church and all, and I would set it up so he could watch it too because he couldn't get it on his tablet and all. But that way we, all, we both got to see it at the same time and all. So anyway, that's, that's all I wanted to say and that... Uh, God does guide us and direct us. He shows us what we need to do and what he wants us to do. And I praise him for that, for um, showing me what he wanted me to do. Also, I, I want to tell you, for years, I, and I don't know how many years, are, um, at work we have a prayer. Every morning at 7.50 we pray. There's a bunch of us ladies and we don't know. I mean, they can get on the call to men and women. All different. They don't even have to say that they're there. And if there's a prayer request, we'll pray. And all these years, I mean, it's been at least 10 years for me. Um, all these years, the things that we have seen happen, people being cured from cancer, um, coming from car wrecks where they're almost dead to where they're alive again and they're normal and all, it's God. You know, and to see that and to know that these things are happening just because people are praying all over the, you know, not just us, but everybody, that um, it's got to be God. There's no other way to explain any of it. So that's all. You know, that, again, I go back to, and I want to talk about that for just a minute while you all are working on your story, because I know you're going to rush up here to be next. <laughs> what if Vicki hadn't stepped out in faith the way she did? John would still be hurting. It takes two people. We can pray for things. And God puts people in our path for a reason, a season, or forever. Think about that. A reason, a season, or forever. People come in our paths. And Vicki was willing to step out in faith. You, we, are the church. We gather inside the church for our huddle, right? That's where we put it to work. That's where we put it into practice is when we leave these doors. But you've got to be willing. Every single one of us have a ministry. we just got to be willing to do what God has asked us to do. What's the worst that can happen? So laugh at you, ignore you. Big deal. Think about that for just a minute. Big deal. Start small. Build bridges. God is amazing, and he wants to use you. And so many times people say, oh, I want to be used. I just don't know what he's got. Why are you doing the little things? See, God just doesn't give you the big things right away, right? Th think, think of an infant. You know that little infant would love to run, right? But they got to do what first? They got to crawl. They got to crawl. We are the same way as Christians. We've got to learn to crawl before we can walk. Never lose sight of that. Anyone else? got like six minutes. Come on, one more. Some of you, one of you step out in faith and be bold for the Lord. Come on, come right up here in front of God and everybody else. Dave, you want to come up? Yeah, sure. Praise the Lord. It'll be good. <laughs> well, 
Well, during this time, I haven't missed any work. I wish I had, but no, I haven't. But uh, they called me essential. I don't know why, but nobody special. But I just was reminded through uh, Buddy's sermon uh, on Sunday how powerful our God is that this verse is in Isaiah, Isaiah 54, 17. So no weapon that is used against you will defeat you. This is in the expanded version, but I think King James says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. And I've heard so many people misquote that scripture because they said, that means there's no weapons formed against us. No, it doesn't say that. It says, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You're going to have weapons. And this, I see this whole, whatever this thing is going on in our nation as a weapon that has been formed. But it shall not prosper. There's, it can't hurt us if we keep our eyes focused on God. Now, we have our eyes focused on the Koba, you know, whatever it is, it will hurt us because it will give us fear, unsurety, but we need to keep our eyes focused on God. So this scripture, you just need to know that God is there, no matter what comes. And if you start running, you're supposed to stand according to scripture and stand on his word. And I'm thankful that he did provide all my needs during this time. He's provided a lot of church needs here. I can hear, hear it through testimonies. But we have been blessed to have the almighty, the everlasting God on our side. And eternity is something that we all are looking for. But right now, we have been created as eternal beings waiting to go to our home when he takes us. Or when, hopefully, I, I want the rapture to happen because I want to be flying. I kind of I enjoy that kind of death. But... If he decides to put me six feet under and then go, that's the way I'll go. But our God is sure. That's the only thing that's sure in this world. And sometimes we get running so scared we forget to get back into the word. We start hiding. But it is God. There is no weapon formed against us. And there will be a lot of weapons formed against us. We just need to realize that. But don't run scared. We're going to be blessed even more from Dave in the next coming weeks. He uh, pastored for a while, and he's going to come and bless us. He's going to preach for us, and I'm excited about that. Um, we got four minutes. Does anybody have one? Miss Vicki. I, I do have something else. Um, I don't know if everybody knows that Melissa Hall is going to be coming to Florida. Okay. I um, You're good. don't like this too well. Anyway, Mercy has lay, let go of a lot of people. And I had a lot of people say to me, aren't you afraid that they're going to let you go? And I had to tell them, no, because God is my source, not Mercy. I love working for Mercy, yes, and, and taking care of my patients and all, but God is my source. Exactly right. Exactly. Anyone else? All right. Do you see how it works? I can see the look on your face. Some of you are like, like jumping rope. You're just wanting to jump in. All right. Step out in faith the next time we do this. We do them every once in a while. And, uh, you know, sometimes they're a little more organized. But you know what? We just do them because sometimes the most spontaneous results come from the heart the most. God's just asking you to step out and just tell others about, about his son. That's all it is. He's done something for each and every one of us. We just got to step out and tell others. All right, we got two minutes left. Y'all are going to get out here early tonight, all right? We're going to pray. God is just good. Think about Sunday. I want you to think about Sunday. Here's your homework assignment till you get back on Sunday or you watch online. God is everywhere, and in everywhere, he's fully present. Think about that. He is everywhere, and everywhere, he is fully present. You have to wait for the rest come Sunday.
<laughs> Heavenly Father, we just love you and we praise you, God. We thank you so much. Lord, I thank you for those that uh, were brave enough to either take the mic and uh, just bless you where they're at or stand up in front of this crazy camera to be seen by everybody. Lord, I just thank you for those that are sitting there and they're working on their next testimony the next time we do this. Father, I thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Most importantly, we thank you for our eternal life, and through him, we can live forever. Just takes that choice to follow him, to follow you. Father, I pray and I lift up every, each and every prayer request that's been made known tonight. Lord, in faith, we're going to thank you for your answers, and we're going to trust you, God, because you are sovereign, and you are everything. Lord, we love you. Keep us safe until we can come back. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.